All right, got my Bedini circuit working. Uh, haven't made any updates on this yet. Seems like it's slowing down. Oops, I hit the thing on accident. Let me show you what I did. Let's set that down here. Unhook it from the battery real quick. All right. The ball bearing spins for a long time. I took the grease out so it can have the maximum uh, speed efficiency that it should have. So what I did here, whoops, uh, just the coil. <laughs> Let me try to set this up right. All right. All right. So what I did is uh, I got two circuits where they're not tied together. They're just totally separate and s except for the input and output for the input, the collectors, um, two coils, two drive, two trigger coils here and here. Um, and the output, we tie both of those together. So yeah, it seems like I'm not really sure if, but yeah, I need to put a neon bulb on there. So I got 100 ohms here, here and here to there. Um, we have the, the coil connected to the leg on this on the back side. So if I need to do repairs I could just cut it off or something. And then we have 1N4007 down below and up here 1N4001. Both of these are TIP35Fives. They work awesome. I decided to use these because the 2N39055 for some reason it would just heat up and die because there's no neon bulb. But for some reason these transistors actually not necessarily heat up and die but they just heat up and they still work but they're kind of like damaged but a while back I used 500 turns and the other circuit would be having 400 turns I think. But yeah that was a different type of coil and I didn't have any way of mounting this on here except for hairbands. <laughs> I had to get a little creative there, so. So yeah, about the trigger coils, that's here and here. And it looks like it can one in from, oh, I'm sorry. It looks like it goes from there, but it's on the outside here. So, so top of the coil, two base connections and two drive coils. They're both together on the input. So one lead here, and then the bottom ones, so there's one right here that goes into right here, and the other one here. So that's both collectors separated, just like the base, but the emitters are tied together. So we have the emitter here, from here it goes all the way down to this lead, which is the negative, and there's the other coil going in the bottom. So, and that's how it is. Um, I wanted to use a circuit board for a radio project, but I haven't found any circuits that are easy. Plus, I'm already designing my own <laughs> little circuit diagram. What I'm doing is I'm using a dual gate. Um, get out of the sun here. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Last night, uh, my cat uh, kept waking me up at night, so it was kind of difficult to go to bed. So I only had like six hours of sleep, but I still function, so... What I did with uh, the radio circuit I'm working on is a dual gate, where it's um, an AND gate. One gate was a transistor, and the next transistor is tied together, the emitter to the collectors. So we have the top one is the oscillator, local oscillator. The other one down below is the tuning circuit. So you tie the capacitors together, and you have a super heterodyne circuit, I think. That's what I call it. But yeah. Uh, more updates about my truck. I gotta um, <laughs> fix the uh, wiring here. <laughs> I thought these were the wires for the uh, on position. Because there's a slip there. But yeah, all the flashing and things here. <laughs> I broke in the horn. <laughs> I feel so stupid. Sorry about that. I shouldn't say I'm so stupid. You know, I don't have to put my down about, down about anything, but... 
Uh, that's pretty much all I have right now. So, um, the choke on the truck is like a MacGyver kind of a thing. I got it to work, and it sounds great. Um, so what I did is with the back where the uh, thermostat was, I opened it up. I thought it was broken, and I broke it by accident. There was a you know, tubing right there, and it goes down. That wasn't connected to anything when I found that out. But later on down the road, I'm going to buy new parts for this anyway. We're just trying something out. So what I'm doing is using a rubber hand. I think you get at Walmart in like, I don't know, 20 feet of it or whatever. And I'm making the choke close, so when you go to start it, it'll stay closed. But when you put throttle into it, the airflow opens it up. You know, like Fast and Furious. Step on the gas, it opens and let it go, and it closes. So up and down like that. And the rubber band, what I had to do is something very interesting. I have to do for another video just because I don't have a lot of time, a lot of time left. So anyway, guys, thanks guys for coming over. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll have more videos soon.